Good evening. I'm David William Lemke, writer, healer, and psychic channel. Since you're all here tonight, and many of you have asked me questions about soulmates, I'm going to just touch on that subject for a bit. People talk about their soulmate when they believe they've found their own true love. The one person on earth that was meant for them. This example of soulmate is quite romantic, isn't it? The ideal partner that balances them completely, completes them, sparks their passion. Combine that with benefit, with the belief that this will last their whole life and longer. Wouldn't it have to? It's fated after all. That one true love, their soulmate, is the only one for them in the world. But then a week, a month, a year later, they find they must have been wrong. If you were crass enough to remind them how they were telling the world that he or she was their soulmate, their reason for living, their life, well, watch out, because there are justifiable grounds for homicide. Let's talk about real soulmates. Soulmates, of course, are people on your soul branch or members of your soul group or soul pod. Soul pod is actually a better term, and I'll go into the why of that in a minute. Well, what is a soulmate? Actually, you have more than one soulmate. You have 42. If you're a hermit, or don't get out much, or live in a sparsely populated area, you'll have little opportunity to meet many of your soulmates. If you're more outgoing or live in a city, you may meet them all. A good definition of a soulmate is someone who will significantly impact your life and you theirs. This will, in most cases, eliminate the guy in the SUV that rear-ended you on the freeway, since it must be mutual. Another point, viewed from the intimacy of the physical universe, the outcome of meeting a soulmate is not necessarily positive, happy, or loving. Do you get that? Also, a soulmate need, need not be of the opposite sex. While giving a reading online, I told Aquarius that a woman was her soulmate. She responded that she herself was a woman, and I replied, I know, and it doesn't matter. Anyway, you don't have to sleep with her because she's one of your soulmates. If someone is your soulmate, please don't jump in bed with them. Soulmate is not synonymous with lover. To understand the idea of soulmates, what they are for, a wider, longer view is necessary here. So let's look at the soul group, or I prefer the soul pod. Picture a pod of whales or dolphins schooling beneath the waves. Like that, your soul pod travels through space and time. Not only that, you must consider extremely long periods of time. Thousands, millions, billions of years. Together you inhabit all the corners of the globe, transversing galaxies, reaching to the far-flung edges of the universe. Like a troop of soldiers, or a troop of gypsies, you and your soul pod travel through life after life and even beyond that. For you also travel between lives. Always with the common goal, 
which amounts to helping each other grow through both positive and negative experiences. Your soulmate may be the perfect mate, the passionate lover, or they may be, they may be the one who betrays you and drives off with your car, leaving you with the kids and the bills, or they may be the major general directing the opposing armies in the battle of your war. Before you get upset with your soulmates because of all this, remember, you've signed the same contract. You will do the same for them in a heartbeat. Okay, the key indicator of a soulmate is is it impactful to both of you? Because it always is. Just as a husband or wife or lover can be your soulmate, so can a mother or father as well as a child, or for that matter, a sibling. But this is not always the case. Some siblings don't interact with their other siblings. Same is true with parents and children. Many of, of us have had a neighbor or a teacher end up having a more powerful impact on our lives than our real parents, or even had a friend of our child be closer to us than our own kids. And remember, the impact is not always positive. Sometimes the lesson that needs to be learned is painful and difficult and maybe it needs to kill you for you to get it. Of course, if someone harms another, they garner the karma, and this certainly includes soulmates. But a soulmate will take on this karma if it truly will benefit you in the cosmic picture. After all, they vowed to do so. It is like they signed a contract. I will help you to grow no matter how painful, no matter what the cost, I swear it by God's eyes. So remember, you have up to 42 soulmates in your soul pod. You've traveled the ages together and you will the future. If they show you love, love them back. And if they cause you pain, love them back. I hope this answers some of your questions about soulmates. Blessings and good night.